We are right here at the University of Ghana. Today is a very, very special day uh, for myself and for my uh, interviewee or my, my very good friend, if I would, if I would call her that. Uh, as you all are aware, the All-African Games, uh, Ghana 2023 is in full session and Team Ghana went into this tournament uh, with a lot of optimism. Uh, optimism to not just go out there and participate, uh, but optimism to go out there and win. And we know what it takes to go into a tournament like this, which is very fiercely competitive, uh, to go out there and win. Today, uh, my guest is a proven winner um, in her field of endeavor. Uh, she has a hall of medals to show for that. And she uh, went, went, went out and won the first three medals for Team Ghana at the All-African Games uh, right here in Accra. Uh, one gold and two silver. I'd like to say a very good afternoon uh, to Winifred in Tumi. Okay. Winifred, as you to me, but to me, definitely, definitely. But then, Charlie, I'm, I'm glad to have you here, man. I mean, um, um it's it's not everybody, like I said, there was an opportunity to sit by a, a medal winning Ghanaian, and these things go into the annals of our history. I'm sure my children one day would come and come and read about Winifred. Yeah. My daughter, particularly, she would be proud to meet you because one out there, you've proven that it is possible. But how did this journey start with weight lifting? Ah, uh, it was a tough start let me put it that way because from 2018 I, that's, how, um, that's how i started through new to Nakain, he introduced me to weightlifting he's a coach okay yes but now he's an arm wrestling referee and a coach as well wow, so he's also branched into yes yeah but was it always weightlifting from the beginning for you yes um in the beginning it was just athletics then later on weightlifting so from weightlifting full time I've been in it for since 2018. Then still counting. Wow. Then you've been multi-talented. I mean, because you've done athletics and you've gone to football. football as well. What position were you playing? I know my two. I was a defender. But you see, you two, you're strong. You've, you've always been a strong woman. Yeah. I want any of the other. However you like it. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, and you've you've achieved a lot as a weightlifter. I mean, aside winning these medals, um, there's a lot of pride in representing your country. I mean, uh, maybe if they put your love down, I can represent Ghana. <laughs> Apart from that, uh, but, but what kind of what, what does it take to go out there and represent Ghana? Um, it takes a lot. When it comes to sports, for instance, you can't just wake up and say I'm going for competition or I'm going to compete or even to be selected into the national team. It's not an easy job because it takes um, a lot of devotion, a lot of like time. It is a whole lot training here and there, focus as well. And if you're not determined, forget it. The talk, the bad influences here and there will keep coming, but your mind is to focus on where you are going and where you want to end it. That's where all the focus is all about. Yeah. Actually, Morocco was my first game to compete in, and by then I was competing in the 49, uh, 45 category. So, when we went, the, um, the motive was to do my best total. So we went for, I think, two weeks camping in Accra. Yeah. Then when we got to Morocco, we did, I think, another one week, three days, because our things weren't ready. So we had to still chain. Then during competition, I was able to emerge um, three bronze medal for Ghana for the first time because by then other sporting disciplines had already started but there was no hope so that was when people started talking hey, so Ghana came all the way to Morocco and up to now nothing, nothing. so there was this journalist Obu Gabi mm -hmm. he came and said Winifred stand there let me take a picture of you I was like ah why would you do that he said you're going to be the first person to win medal for us I was like you are not good. That's what I said to him. He said, just stand there, let me take you a shot. So I took the picture then. When I started, snatch, third, clean and jack third, and total third. That's how come I had a brace, wow. by lifting that weight, because the tension was crazy. And the funny aspect was, when I started the snatch, there were a few supporters. So I think later on, when I was, when I was about to start there, Cleaning jack. That's when I saw um, Nana Mankata and stuff. All of them coming in. I was like, ah, how come they are here all of a sudden? 
not knowing they had already gotten the news already. So when I was done, then they called me, we talked, had fun over there, then that's how the journey started wow. for the African Games. Wow. Now I can see the, the, the beams on your face and with the nostalgia and everything. I mean, it's, I mean, if it was me, I'd probably not never sleep again in my life. It's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. now fast forward to Ghana 2023. I'm sure the pressure would have been a lot more because uh, Charlie was still with fear. Um, how was the preparation like going into Ghana 2023? From the beginning, I was already um, getting ready because I was already participating for the Olympic co competitions for the qualification. So I was on my own training with some of the coaches while I was heading to the other qualifications. So I went for um, Tunisia for one qualification. Then I went to Qatar. Then unfortunately, I went to Saudi, but I couldn't compete because my body weight, I was having a problem with my body weight. So, And I went to all these competitions without coaches. So how did you do it? I just went there. Then my own teammates had to be my coach. So with Tunisia, for instance, there was one lady called Mimi. Mimi. She was my coach with Sandra. And then Forrester was also my coach. They are all athletes. So we were just helping each other just to make sure we get the total point. Wow. And, and this must take a certain level of spirit and belief and heart and soul. And that's admirable about you. Uh, but then again, going into um, Ghana 2023, uh, I'm sure you were in camp for a while. I mean, how, how did that go? How did that contribute to, to where we are now? Let me say Cape Coast, because that's where we had our camp. Cape Coast was exciting, let me put it that way. It was fun and training was good because we had a good training. Physios were there, psychologists were there. And the psychologist bit, I mean, it's, it's important because a lot of our sports teams crumble. I mean, even, I mean, we've seen our black stars. They, yeah. they go out there and they throw away leads. I mean, people are still wondering how to do before you touch the ball. Yes. <laughs> but then again, how important were all of these people to, to where you are now? And then if, if possible, I mean, you can give them some props. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let me say with the psychologist aspect, when we went, in the beginning, my mind was, I'm just hiding myself mm -hmm. to just focus on chain and go. But along the line, Nana Mankata started, we, we had to do introductions here and there. So the CDM and a lot of people came and I was introduced as the first uh, athlete to win bronze for Ghana in the previous African Games. So now it was like tension. If you pass your Winifred, if you, I tell you. <laughs> so when the psychologist came, I had a one-on-one -on -one chat with Mr. Seth. So when, at first when he was talking, I didn't open up to him. I was like, I was saying this in my mind, like, ah, why should I, like, I don't know you. Why should I talk to you? And he had a way of sending things for me to just feel free. And I started talking to him like my brother, my father. And it was really helpful. I opened up to him. He sighed me, told me what to do, what not to do. And he was always there when I was training. He always come there come and look at how I'm faring. And even the physios, for instance, as well. Even when I was, at first, I wasn't in pain. When I go there just to go and disturb them, they didn't suck me. They'll be like, when if I you can worry you? Sit down, what do you want? Tell me, Let, let's talk. And sometimes that helps, you know what I mean? So I was just having fun with them. They were like my brothers, let me put it that way. They really helped me a lot because pressure was from everywhere every angle it got to a time when i go for training i was like my focus wasn't there because everybody's looking up to me how am i going to even like improve the tension even to grab the bar i need to focus how am i going to do that set was there physios were there to help me with all those things and even aside that um other federation heads were there to you know talk to me here and there. Most of the athletes were there. Even though when they told us that no one should go to other, someone's room to go and just step. The judos, for instance, they were always in my room. They like, talking to me, having fun, athletics. Uh, it was like, it was fun. The camp was great. I won't lie to you. Wow. I mean, and, and, and that 
manifested in your performances. We we have uh, three medals. Wow. Can I can I wear them? Yes, please. My God, man, ladies and gentlemen, um, you can see the silver. Uh, we've got the gold and the silver. Charlie, let me wear some. Uh, wear I didn't do some of the weightlifting, but Charlie, they can't wear the things from. Oh my God, man, this is legendary. This is legendary. And um, one day these will be in museums, and and I'll have had the privilege to to put them around my neck. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and I love the fact that they are. They show how heavy your 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 work rate was. So, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, we um, have these medals. They're the first ones won by Team Ghana at the All African Games um, in Accra, and they just show you that. Listen, barriers only exist when you see them. Um, if you fail to see barriers, uh, you just keep going and going and going, and and that's exactly what Winifred has done. Uh, she's proving that she's a winner, uh, not just by word of mouth. Uh, by, by by going out there and completely breaking, smashing every barrier ahead of her. And uh, we're proud of her. With what brought about these medals? When we started, um, was a, when I was about to start, I went very early because my way in was at 8 a.m. So I was there, I think, by 6.45, resting on the platform, meditating, calculating how I'm going to lift the metal from the ground, speed to my parrot, then to my rising and then to my finishing. That was where the calculations were we're all about. Because the moment you miss one step, you are, disqualified. You are not going to lift anything. And those I was going to compete with, I was like, we are all putting in the same total, but they are doing more than that. And they were also very good athletes. But one thing about weightlifting is no matter how good you are, on the platform, on the main podium, you can show your weight all away. That's one thing. But my mind was on point. Like I was just thinking of lifting and then getting a good lift. That was one thing. And my coaches were there to psych me. They were there to tell me, don't look at them. Just focus on what you are lifting. Your warming up is going to determine what you're going to do up there. So just keep the focus going. To the extent that they had to give me an airport to listen to music, just to not listen. Just to calm me. down and yes, yeah. because I was really boiling. I won't lie to you. So my first match, I went for 60 kg. I was supposed to go for 61, but because of the pressure and the tension, so I just had to go lower. So from there, then I went to 63, and I missed that 63 because. I had an issue backstage, so I had to sit, psych myself, suck everybody around, then meditate within less than two minutes, then go back and lift that same sister three again. So when I lifted it, then I went to sit down. Now, when you are done with the snatch, you have like 10 minutes to psych yourself for clean and jerk. So I was relaxed, took in a bit of water, then I started with my warming up for clean jerk. I, when I started a clean jerk, my motive was if I have missed one from snatch, I'm not supposed to miss out from the clean jerk. I have to lift all three metals. So that was the focus. So gradually I went for my first attempt, perfect. Second, it was heavy, but I dazed though. When I cleaned the weights and I was getting up, I dazed a little bit, but I didn't let go. I breathed in and out for it before I checked the weights. Then I had a good lift over there. My third attempt to the same thing. Even that one, I totally dazed off. But I just had to keep my cool, breathe in and out again. Waited more than, I think, one minute before I was able to check it. So even those standing backstage were like, I'm not going to do it. Because the more you keep waiting, the more the weight is on your neck, you lose your strength. But me on the other hand was different. If I keep long, I'd rather gain my strength for the check. So that's how come I won the silver. I would have won gold in the clinic check. But our rules is, if you and I are lifting, let me say, 50 kilos, whoever book first and go first 
that person emerges the winner. So there was this um, Tunisia girl that went first. That's how come she had a gold in the cleaning jig. So if not that, I would have gotten two gold and one silver. Wow. But there's, yes. there's more opportunities to do that. I mean, I, and, and it's, it's, it's proud moment. Yes. And the, to come to the gold. Yes. The reason why I had a so gold you, was... So your camera will take a good look at the gold. Yeah. You can touch it. <laughs> the reason why I had a gold was my snatch and the cleaning jack were combined. So they look at the one that was, is on top. So when they combined it, I had a total of 144. And I think the other person had a total of 142. So I was way ahead of the person. That's how come I had the gold. Already, when I had the silver in the snatch, my coaches came to me like, you have one medal, let's keep it going. So that moment, the excitement was coming. Then my, uh, my former coach, Neil too, was there to support us. Well. Then he was like, hey, keep your cool, relax. There is bigger one to come, so you have to keep your focus. So that's how it started. So when I went for the clean and jerk as well, I was only listening to my colleagues, the fans coming out, because if I hear it, it means there is a good opportunity, but I can't go, I can't go to the podium to go and look at it. I'm not allowed to. So I was using them to know what was going on. So that's how I come, I know that I had a goal. So when um, I learned I had a goal, I had to, I danced right at that place, ran from there, went straight to where the podium was, to where my president was, danced with my president and some of the athletes, like it was much exciting. I was, to, to the extent I had, I, I was so happy that I had to, I was locked. I would like to you. I got logged because the smiles were there, the love, the dance, the excitement, the joy was there. So when the, um, we were done, even they didn't want to let me go, but I had to report back for the medal ceremony. So it was like a whole vibe. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I can just picture, I mean, the excitement and then. Yeah, there are videos, yeah. like, it yeah. was great. And so coming back to these medals in Accra 2020, Three. Um, like I said earlier, you went in with all the pressure. Uh, I can't stop holding them. They're beautiful. Um, you, you went in with all the pressure. Uh, home support as well. I'm sure family were looking up to you. Oh my God. Uh, you want to say something to your family right yes, now? Yes. My mom and dad, like, I'm really grateful. And my younger sisters as well. I'm really grateful to you because you coming all the way to come and watch me compete. And this is their first time wow. seeing me, like, real, like, Life watching me to lift, not on television, mm. but to come see me lift. And I, I'm really grateful to them. I'm really happy. So, Charlie, the Ntumi family, Charlie, we love you. You've not, you've, not just only, you've not just given us a superstar, but they are supporting that superstar. And then, I mean, like I said, when, when I saw you, I was starstruck um, because you don't get to sit by a multi medal winning Ghanaian athlete every day. Let me say something yes. small about no, my parents. No, go, go ahead. The Ntumi is my biological father, mm. but the kudis go to my stepdad. Mm. I don't I don't classify him as my stepdad. Mm. I've taken him as my biological mm. dad. He is Stanley Ibe. Wow. Yes, and he was there with my mom. Wow. And I say I'm really, really like grateful to him. Wow. He has taken care of me since my childhood. Even though my dad is there, but I'm really grateful to him. Wow. Yes. Well, Stanley, Charlie, salutations, sir. You do everything. You're giving us a world beater, and, and we believe you are going to go even further. Uh, I love this, man. I wish I didn't take Charlie, how do I compete, man? I for come do the distance. Uh, <laughs> it's the technique. The technique. Okay. So, so tell us a bit about it. I mean, development of the sport for you. Um, what did it take for you to do? Because you only started, what, five years ago, and in five years, you've achieved this much. I mean, what did it take? Is it the, just the training? Um, is it the people around you? Did you read a bit on your own? Like, what, what did it take? Well, let me say, it's all about Neil Tulakai, mm. the coach. That's our former coach, mm. the one that introduced weightlifting to me. It's all to him because he taught me a lot. Sometimes I can be discouraged. I mean, the when he left, it got to the time I was really discouraged, but he kept talking to me calling me, my dad keep on talking to me, my mom and some of my few friends. 
I don't really have friends. So a few of them. And then those that were helping me a bit, supporting me here and there a bit, they were my hope. Let me put it that way. Wow. And, and since you started this, how many medals in total have you won? Well, let me start calculating them. Wow, that many? Oh my yeah. God. She's, she's, she's been doing it for five years and she, I mean, this is, this is remarkable. Yeah, let, let me say, yeah. 2018, mm. one bronze, mm. 2019, March, one bronze, then that same 2019, three bronze, mm. then 2020, one, I think one bronze, mm. then 2020 or 2021, another, um, two, Three bronze, then 2022, one silver, no, that one there was no medal, but 2023, there was one silver, three bronze, and then 2020, let me say 2024 for 2023, one gold, two silver. Listen, corporate Ghana, listen, listen and listen very carefully. Um, in 42 years or more, we've not seen anything from football. We've barely seen anything from some of the big sports. Uh, but here's a young lady who has defied all the odds and won in excess of 10 medals within a period of five years. It's amazing. She's not only doing this for herself, but she's doing it for us as a country. You do not understand the pride that comes with holding these medals. And by virtue of the fact that I'm Ghanaian and I can stand somewhere and say, listen, she's flying the flag. And so far, she was the first person to have won these medals at the All-African Games and the only Ghanaian to have won a gold medal. It's remarkable. I mean, considering the people that we are coming up against. And we want to see her at the next level. Um, we want to see you at the Olympics. Um, we want to um, see you breaking world records at you know, international athletics events, etc. Because you've showed clearly that you have what it takes. And I mean, I'll, I'll put my, my, my head on a chopping board. Listen, whoever is watching this, wherever you are, um, we want to take Winifred to the next level. She's an asset to Ghana. She's, she's what we all look for. For every young lady that's watching this, if you want somebody to look up to, to emulate, this is the one to emulate. I mean, because it's not easy. You've entered a terrain that is tough and you've conquered. It, it doesn't take mere words and, and, and all of that. It takes a lot of determination and I believe all of Ghana should be proud of you. I mean, if you've not had any reason whatsoever to come out and watch the All-African Games, this is one of your reasons to do so. Um, this young lady is going out there and she's making us proud. She's winning medals. And, and trust me, where, whether you're coming to watch swimming or you're in Bortiman or you're going to watch football in Cape Coast or you're coming out to watch athletics at Lagon, wherever it is, I mean, this is what the All-African Games is about. Um, these medals and these things that make us proud as Ghanaians and, and we love to see them. I mean, I'm getting a bit emotional, uh, but then again, it's excitement to, to talk to people like yourselves. I mean, so what would you say to the young lady out there that's watching this? Um, what I'll tell them is, you know, in this world, no matter where you are, even if you are hidden, just keep your focus. Definitely you'll come to the top. The negative talk will come, a lot of um, bad energies here and there. It's going to come, but come on. You know what you want for yourself. You know where your determination is. You know where you want to reach in life. Just keep going, keep sewing higher. You don't know where your helper is going to come from. It can take you three years, 10 years, but mind you, if you are determined and well-focused, you will get to where you want to get to. Forget about whatever anybody will say. Let me say, me lifting metals, for instance. Like, a whole lot of, um, excuse me to say, but don't listen to them. Let them say it. The more you keep saying it, the more I work on it, the more I work on Thank you. At first, I papa and mama won't support me. But my first competition, no one even said me could play that year. They told me it was athletics. So I went. To the, they escorted me to the airport. Me flew plane and said I'm mummy free on them. Mummy said who's the plane to our own free home? 
I left God there before me compete. I'm not going to say any American will go to me compete. That day, I'm Papa Kase. Oh yeah, me no one come. Me pay that day. I'm in your down. My dad couldn't send it. The only thing he said was, "Nyamishwa." Ghana ni oh no. Sometimes yeah yeah dia. Your parents no, they don't support it. Yes, it's everywhere. It's in Africa, but you have to prove them wrong. If you're on the right track, just keep going. When they see you, and you'll be on the back of your home, say, Mama, I'm Papa, I'm going to catch you down the path. Debbie, they will be the one to come to you. Say, Meba, I'm not sure I'm dancing. Say, Wow, Ma, I'm not sure. 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 Just keep your focus, and you can do it. Just do what you can do best, and then just keep going. Wow, wow. I mean, I'm sure everybody who is watching this interview will be inspired um, and would have a little bit of an introspection with regards to where we are and where we are going as a country. And for the All-African Games, um, Ghana 2023, um, these are the stories that we like to hear. These are the stories um, that spur us on to keep believing um, in our athletes, in ourselves and in our country. Um, I believe we are going to go even further. And like, I'll make another appeal to corporate Ghana. Listen, this is a brand to invest in. This is somebody who is going very far on the world stage. I mean, imagine I'm um, here at the Olympics or at the International Athletics. Yeah, um, with the Olympics, mm. the reason why I can't qualify is with weightlifting, you can't just be picked randomly. Mm. We have uh, qualifications and we have minimum of six that you have to participate in. Mm -hmm. We have two, uh, let me say, continental, and then you have to go for four, world, two World Cup and World Championship as well. Mm. So if you're not able to go for this, you can't get to the point. And so far, I was only able to go for two wow. out of the six. And someone has gone for, let me say, almost five. And we are left with only just one qualification. So if anyone wants to help me continue with these qualifications, let me say the Olympic is over, the qualification for Olympic is over. We have Commonwealth Games. And our qualification starts this September coming up. And that one too is another qualification. And we have minimum of, I think, three or four to go. If I'm not able to go for all this, there is no way I can qualify. So please, corporate bodies, anyone out there who wants to support me, participate in it, they should come out. Because when it comes to weightlifting, accommodation is always a problem. Tickets is always a problem. And we don't just go for competitions. We always register three months before competition. And we have something we call WADA, your whereabouts. You have to also do that three months before competition. So if I don't do all this, there is no way I can go for competitions. Wow. Yes. So I'm going to make this my personal crusade, please. Um, we want to get Winifred as far as possible in, in this pursuit of greatness. And remember, this greatness, like I always say, and I've said throughout this interview, is not just for her and her family. Um, it's for all of us as Ghanaians. I mean, imagine seeing her on some of the biggest platforms. The pride it brings us is amazing. And that's why I would appeal to everybody. Like I said, I'm going to make it my personal crusade to chase people. I mean, wherever they are, be it uh, some of the people, the so-called big men in society, the big corporates, etc. Let's, let's adopt it. Let's, let's make this our project. Um, because listen, um, she has everything to show for it. I mean, it's not mere talk, but she has everything to show for it. It shows that she's capable and and if you look across the people she competed with to win these medals it is no mean feat absolutely not um so please um we are going to rally support uh, for winifred and ensure that winifred takes this to the very next level um she'll easily be sweeping gold all through i mean yeah. i mean i mean very very easily and all and and, and all of that and, and we are proud and we are excited so like i said earlier if you've not found reason to watch the All-African Games, this is reason. If you're a corporate body and you've not found reason to uh, be a part of this crusade to project our games, uh, this is more than enough reason uh, for wonderful personalities like Winifred. And if uh, you're just a young girl or a woman watching us who um, does not understand what it feels like to go out there and defy the odds and break barriers, um, this is a manifestation of breaking barriers, defying odds, and doing the extraordinary. Charlie.
it's, it's been amazing talking to you yeah. and i'm sure we'll have an opportunity to talk again and again and again um to project the wonderful things you do do you have any more um um competitions to compete in at the games um for these games the african games i'm done with my okay. Okay. yeah okay. but my other colleagues are still on it amazing. and i would really like to say a very very thank you to those that came to support me was I was lifting my weight because I wasn't expecting much people to come there, especially with basketball team, arm wrestling team, and some of the judo kings, and uh, I think some of the handball. In fact, some of my own um, other federations. I say thank you very much. The support was huge. The dance and everything. I'm really grateful to them. So it shows you why you should go and support. I mean, let's let's support our people and bring him. I'm taking the medals home, man.